My farm is a hill farm. It's mostly mountain and uh, low-lying bogland. It suits me, I like it, and I just keep it like that. I absolutely love living here. I've been living here for 32 years. Bought this little farm 32 years ago, and we've reared a family here. So it's a great little farm. It's not just about growing crops and putting them in bags and making money. We want to do something. We wanted to please ourselves when we look out the window. I'm farming in a slightly less conventional way and that's a journey that started really by accident about six years ago when a guy locally was selling strip till drills and was demoing them around and I said, well here, why don't you sow a field for me? And I just thought, this, this works really well. So gradually we, we moved to establishing all our crops that way. So we haven't ploughed anything now, I think, for well, at least five years. So we're uh, an organic farm. Basically the aim is to try and find a balance between feeding livestock and producing food and ensuring that the whole time we work with nature. Um, and I suppose just to remind ourselves that we're not trying to manage it, we're trying to just manage what we do to allow it to, um, I suppose, be itself. I started questioning uh, what I had traded for, for all of this efficiency and it was, it was like the the blinkers of efficiency, we just narrowed them more and more and, and ignored more and more at the, at, at the other side. I, I changed course in 2015 and converted to organics and started trying to farm more holistically. I suppose in some ways I kind of come full circle and I'm back to appreciating nature and the diversity that's on the farm. Back of my mind is climate change and what are we going to do about that and I think as a landowner and as a farmer there is a certain amount of responsibility that we do something about it. We're now in about nearly 40 acres of very much mixed forestry we planted 22 years ago. The diversity has resulted in a, a really rich habitat. Uh, we've just had red squirrels coming in they're probably going for the cones on the Norway spruce. Uh, large numbers of small birds I think we're looking forward to maybe having continuous forest cover, which again will improve the diversity. We're never ever going to clear fell, so we're contributing to our natural environment in many different ways here. My one nature hack that I'd give to a farmer is a very simple one, and that is to stop cutting your hedges. Let the hedges grow. In Ireland we have a huge resource. All the talk is about planting trees and planting forestry, but we have miles and miles of hedges all over the countryside and the more we let them grow the more carbon they'll put into the soil and at the same time they'll provide a huge habitat for wildlife to live in for pollinators to be in for insects to be in for birds and all it requires is us to stand back and watch them grow i think often as with um, being a farmer and an environmentalist it sounds like it's an inherent clash, but it's not necessarily. It's just finding the balance between both, and there's so much common ground between what farmers are doing on the ground and what environmentalists uh, would like to see done on the ground. And I suppose it's just trying to find ways to communicate that message. I think farm from your heart. Listen to your heart. Okay, you got to you got to make enough money to live, but listen to your heart. And intrinsically, every farmer that I know is a custodian of the countryside and they want to do the best for the land that they own and they want to pass it on to the next generation in better heart.